What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Swamps. I guess live video. It's on the left side here, we have Dynamorphia going up against Ubel on the right side here. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, which channel a lot. We're on the road to 10k here. We are going to be seeing Dynamorphia win the die roll, having the advantage of being able to go first game one. And of course, if they win the game, they'll be able to go into first game three as well. We're going to be seeing a 3 jet being normal summon, activating the effect, being able to set a trap from the deck. Uh, going to be quite nice. Obviously, it has to be a Dynamorphia trap. Could you imagine being able to set any trap from the deck? Now, depending on what their hand's going to be, we're going to be seeing an intact here. It's going to be a monster negate while they control a Dynamorphia card on the field. Uh, quite nice and counter trap nonetheless. And we are going to be seeing a Prosperity going to be activated as well. Banishing most likely six from the deck, being able to dig. And this is going to be very good against a trap deck. Now, normally, you don't normally want to ash a Cloud of Product Prosperity here because you can just ash a card that's in the. Uh, in the hand like if you have maybe another card but in the trap case most of the times you're not able to ash the card they end up searching here so ashing the product prosperity which we are going to be seeing is going to be quite nice uh, we're going to be seeing just a one more set here and they're going to pass turn just on that and now it's going to be up to the ubel we're going to be seeing a copy of terraform we're going to be activating the effects being able to search for a copy of the nightmare throne nightmare thrones can be able to play through as well as search if they want to you know be able to destroy a spirit of ubel or be able to search for a copy of dark beckoning beast a copy of the Spirit of Ubel being able to search for pretty much anything they want in their deck. Uh, Samsara, the Lotus, whatever you really care for. And we do see uh, lots of monsters in the Dynamorphia hand as well here. Uh, but they are thinking on resolution of this. We're going to be seeing a copy of the Frenzy going to be activated. And this is going to be able to fusion summon using one from the extra deck and one from the deck here. And we are going to be chaining an Ash Blossom from this. But we have the intact, which can be negating the Ash Blossom. Terrace is paying half our life points, bring us down to 2,000 here uh, to summon out a copy of most likely the Ketragena. We're going to dump a copy of Diplos as well as a Stealth Bird thing to go for the Ketragena, which can be able to gain the ability to banish the trap, or I guess pay half the life points to banish the trap and then copy the effect. Copying the copy of Frenzy, being able to fusion summon once again here. We're going to dump a copy of a Diplos once again. I think we have three Theresias in our hand, uh, one being on the field. Dump another copy of the Stealth Bird going up from for a Rexstrom here. This card's going to be absolutely incredible. So now our opponent's not able to activate any monster effects that are over 1,000. Now, the thing is, with the Ubel cards, they don't actually have that much attack. You know, having the zero attack, going to be able to uh, play through a lot of this interaction here. You know, has a really good matchup against Dynamorphia. Making them just take the damage. So we're going to be seeing a Nightmare Throne going to be activated. They're going to search for a copy of Samsara D. Lotus. Normal summon Samsara D. Lotus, a 0 0 attack. And this is going to activate the effect, trading itself to search or summon a copy of Spirit of U Bell here. We're going to be seeing the Rexstrom paying 500 or paying half their life points, making it so that that card becomes 500, making it gain. We're going to be seeing Nightmare Throne destroying a copy of Ubel here, searching for a copy of the, uh, the, what's his face here? The, uh, Squirmer. Now we do summon out a Terror Incarnate by destroying a copy of Ubel, and they can just go Battle Phase Attack. We're going to see them link up into a copy of Muttraker. And then we can put back to summon, right? And we see a Skirmer summon itself out. We can just go for a Spirit here. Spirit attack and should win the game, right? We only have one in the graveyard to protect. So we're going to be linking up into a copy of Yama here. Skirmer can then banish someone with a copy of the U-Bell. And then we can actually put back the Tear and the copy of Skirmer there. Yeah, so we're going to go for a Spear. And this should just be game here because Nightmare Pain is going to be able to... Uh, make the Dynamorphia player end up taking the battle damage, uh, which is honestly just crazy. And they're down to 500. They're going to attack into the Theresia with the Spirit here, and 
that's just going to be game. I mean, if you, even if they attack with the copy of Yubel, uh, Yubel will try to deal battle damage as well as effect damage with the Nightmare Pain there. And they're explaining that to the Dynamorphia player there, and they're going to be seeing them take half because of... I'm not exactly sure why they're taking half. We're going to be seeing them take half twice and just be able to pass turn on that. Maybe because of trap card? I don't actually know. I have zero clue. But it's going to be kind of hard for Dynamorphia to kind of out this. Uh, you know, Spirit and Yubel are very uh, powerful cards. Especially we're going to be seeing the Yubel tributing off the copy of the Yama. Essentially just uh, to keep it on the board here. But we're going to be seeing the Theresia being normal. Someone this is going to allow us to go up into an XYZ. Uh, you know, maybe going up into a copy of the uh, Dolka here. And we do set a trap from the deck. Setting a copy of the Sonic, I believe. And they have to attack if they're able here. So they are pretty much forced to go battle phase unless they want to change everything to defense position and I don't really think they want to do that there so we're going to be seeing a Dolka being made or a they do play the other guy so we're going to be seeing a Dolka being made and attack position which is going to make it so that they have to attack they try to pass there they realize they have to go to battle phase and at that point it's just going to be game especially with Adolka in attack position uh, yeah so they just admit the feet there realizing that they have made the mistake they could have turned everything but the Dolka into defense some of the Dolka in defense and then like they still would just lose I don't think that there's anything even the like the ferret flames is not going to protect them because it's all zero like the uh, U-Bell cards are able to just avoid stuff super easily. But yeah, Spirit and Nightmare Pain are definitely a pain uh, to deal with, especially for the uh, Dynamorphia deck. Like they have, that's like the disadvantage that they do have. Now, it is a good deck against a bunch of other stuff, but like U-Bell is like the exact counter to that deck. Um, I think that the deck's even really good against, uh, against Tempai as well. You know, it's a kind of an anti-meta deck. Um, that's controlling the field. But yeah, Ubel just unfortunately has zero attack and that actually makes you take the damage, uh, therefore playing around it very nicely. Uh, but moving on to game two here, we are going to be seeing the Ubel player uh, most likely be forced to go second again. Uh, but like the Dynamorphia player here is like kind of in scrambles. You know, uh, what do I do? Do I make go first? I want to go first. I'm a trap deck. But, you know, one copy of Ubel or Spirit of Ubel here can just tr end my turn, you know, end my the game, essentially, being able to uh, do some stuff. So do we want to, like, maybe summon out a copy of the Rextrum um, in defense, making it so they are going to be slowly chipping away their life points? And I didn't see anything that was a big attack there other than the Yama. So maybe they just want to let them go first, set up their traps, and then slowly start picking away at their board. I mean, I honestly don't even know if uh, what if I was playing Battle Morphia, how would I would deal with Ubel? I feel like it's just a bad matchup for me. I just have to hope that they brick and uh, that I can't really play. But yeah, it is quite unfortunate for Battle Morphia here. Now we are going to be seeing some other Battle Morphia replays on the channel. I know they played against Sprite against myself actually, um, and absolutely just smoked me. So stay tuned for that one. There uh, definitely was not playing the right cards for that, but. We're going to be seeing the Dynamorphia player end up going first. Once again, Norm's winning the copy of Theresia. And now we see actually a lot of purple in the hand, which is going to be a lot better than it was before. We're going to set a copy of Frenzy. You know, no more triple Theresias in the hand here. We're actually going to be playing with some nice trap cards. I also saw a strike there, so that could potentially be very nice against a normal summon or even the effect of the U-Bell to destroy. 
We're going to be setting three more cards here and just passing turn on that. Now we're going to see a copy of Engraver going to activate the effect, letting us search for a copy of Track or the copy of Sanct. Now a lot of players are playing Sanct as well now. We see a call with the grave on the copy of Engraver. That's going to be a huge hit. We see a normal summon of a Samurai, Samurai D Lotus. Another good card that would have been good to hit with a copy of the call with the grave, but. We're going to see a Frenzy going to be activated. They have the Ash Blossom, and are we going to be seeing a Strike? We see an Iron Thunder as well. So we're going to be striking that and negating it once again. Dump Theresia, as well as a copy of the Stegosaurus, most likely the Flying One. We're going to note the copy of the Catcher Geno once again. Activating the effect here to let us pie half once more, one more time to go up into a copy of the Frenzy being banished for the Diplos and a copy of the Stegosaurus to go up into the copy of the Rexstrom. And we are down to 1,250 life points. So 1,250. They pay half one more time, bringing us down to 650, I believe, or 625. To make the Samurai D Lotus go up. And it's going to let them just pass turn on this. Leaving just a Samurai D Lotus on the field. You'll see a normal summon of a Diplos activating the effect, sending one from the deck, sending a copy of the uh, Intact, I believe. And that's going to make the opponent lose. 500 life points here because we do have uh, 2,000 life points are left. And we see you Ubelda scoop it up. They had three Ash Blossoms in the hand. That's not what we're looking for. You know, we did see the Dynamorphia, hope that they brick, and then they just did indeed brick here. And so we're going to be going on to game three with Ubelda. Going to be able to choose to go first here. Now that's going to be a very problematic for the, uh, the Dynamorphia player, but they did get themselves into a game of three, which is going to be absolutely crazy on their part. Now, we are going to be seeing some hand traps being sided in. I thought we saw a copy of Ash Blossom. I think we see some Dimension sh uh, Shifters as well being sided in. So if we could see maybe a copy of D-Shifter dropped on the U-Bell player, that could potentially just stop the uh, whole access to a uh, Phantom without putting those cards back in the hand. Now, that could be, uh, that could be hard. We could see a copy of... You know, uh, the Lotus being hit, you know, not being able to uh, return. Uh, we could see the Squirmer as well, essentially losing their resource, gaining uh, by summoning back out. And of course, if we get multiple spirits in the in the Banish Zone, uh, that could be quite nice in the grind game that we might be able to be seeing here. Now, if we don't really care about uh, D Shifter because we essentially play on the second turn anyways. So, you know, going second and we D Shifter you turn zero. And then we set five traps during our turn, and then we pass it to you, and D-Shifter is no longer live. Well, we can play our trap cards, send the cards to the graveyard. So we do see some heavy siding there. With the D-Shifters being put in, and what do we take out? We see a cobble theory being taken out, and that was all I ought to see. And a copy of Strike, but it looks like the Strike's going back in. Maybe taking out a card of demise, I think I always just saw. We are shuffling it up. And we're going to be moving on to game three here in one second. So diving into game three, we do see a copy of the Nightmare Throne going to be activated. Going to be able to search or destroy and we let that resolve we see us destroy a copy of the spirit of u-bell someone with a copy of the u-bell here normal someone with a copy of samsara d lotus activating the effect and we do have an ash for this that's going to be able to stop the copy of samsara d lotus uh from summoning with the copy of spirit spirit searching for the nightmare throne and we do go for a engraver search for the copy of the track track send the copy of lurie and then we're going to be summoning with the copy of lurie here we do have the copy of 
spirit that can be made, but we're going to be linking up into a copy of Moon instead. Uh, maybe we want to put back the yeah, we want to put back the U Bell here, going for the copy of the spirit or the Phantom. My bad. I keep saying spirit when I mean to say Phantom. We're going to go up into the copy of Requiem, activating the effects of the copy of Engraver here. Then we're going to go up into a Princess, most likely, and that's going to be able to summon out the copy of the Engraver by putting back the copy of Requiem. And here we can just XYZ up into a copy of the Caesar, which is going, oh, or we can link up away into the sequence here. Sequence can then activate the effect, putting back the summon with the copy of the Aerial Eater. Aerial Eater can then dump the copy of the Squirmer. Squirmer can then banish some of the copy of Spirit, which can now allow us to have access to the Nightmare Pain, which is going to be able to then destroy the search. This is crazy. We're going to see Nightmare Pain destroy the copy of Spirit. Spirit can be summoning with the copy of the U-Bell, as well as searching for the copy of Squirmer. Um, and then we have to put back with Nightmare Throne as well, I think. Okay, yeah, we summon up the copy of the uh, big guy with Nightmare Throne being one level higher than the copy of the Spirit. And then we summon out the copy of U-Bell off the copy of the Spirit. Now we could link those up into a copy of Yama. Yama can then search for the copy of the Shavara. And we link away the Yama as well as the Terror for a copy of Rage. And then we can put back if we wanted. Oh, we know we should go destroy the... We still have a Spirit in Greybeard, right? Yes, yeah, so we can go Yama. Or... So the copy of the Squirmer here. They're going to be destroying the copy of the yeah of the Squirmer with the copy of Shavara, and then we're going to be seeing the Yama summon back out the copy of the Spirit, destroying the copy of the Shavara, which is going to set the copy of the Trap here. We summon back this to Spirit as well, which lets us overlay into a copy of Verugus being a Omni Negate, which is quite nice. And this is like the full combo that uh, we have here without um, without like having the copy of Desiree here. So we have a copy of Phantom, a Rage, alongside a copy of the Escape, being able to pop two cards. Uh, and then we're going to be able to add back. Now we can't summon back, out, obviously, the copy of the Rage, because we do have a Yama gone. But we have a Vrugis as well, it's going to be able to destroy a card, which is going to be really nice here. And we set a card as well, uh, which can just be whatever. Now, if we want to plan our uh, our things correctly here, we can uh, we can do Veru just first. But we're going to go escape here, targeting the Rage, and then one of the back row. Choosing the middle one here, destroying the copy of Solomon Judgment, and then we're going to be seeing the Rage as well activate its effects to be able to add back a copy of the Shavara, I think. And just pass turn on this. Now they're going to ask about the Vrood just here because that card's going to be absolutely crazy. It can like negate, pop one, then detach to pop another card on the field, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but we're going to be seeing a card put back for a copy of the Engraver here. You know, we're speeding through it. We do not want to be getting in time for the uh, Dynamorphia player here. We are both at equal life points, but we're going to be seeing the square. We're going to activate the effect of Banishing to summon the copy of the Terror here. And then we're going to activate the Shavara, targeting the copy of Terror, destroying it. Then we're going to be seeing the effect of the uh, Nightmare Throne. going to activate, targeting the copy of the Terror. We're going to summon up the copy of Spirit. Spirit's going to add us another copy of Nightmare Throne. So playing two, very reminiscent of the Master Duel. We're going to go up into a copy of the uh, Requiem here, and they're going to think on the summon. Are we going to be seeing a... Maybe another judgment to stop the summon or the engraver is going to activate the effect summon out the copy of or Rockcom can activate the effect summon out the copy of the engraver here. And we can go right go right up into a copy of Caesar or a sequence. And then this is going to be met with a copy of the judgment. Uh, very nice. But we are down on the four thousand life points here. But if we don't have any monsters, or Ferruge is going to be the only thing that can deal damage. But it is a three thousand attack body, so We're going to be seeing them attempt to go battle phase here. And they are going to activate the copy of Dynamorphia Frenzy, making them down to 2,000 life points here. And do we negate that? And we choose to negate it there. 
and we just admit defeat, realizing we're going to have enough too close to time and just going to be able to just take the game. Uh, so we see the UBEL player end up taking it in game three, and they have the judgments of their own here. Uh, regardless, hope you're watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and see more content like this. Stay safe. Peace.